I'm fired up and I'm ready to go. I'm fired up and I'm ready to go. I'm fired up and I'm ready to go. This is the Billionaire Brown experience. Let's go. JB, if you would like to say hello to everyone. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, you having me on. Yeah, absolutely, man. And you're out of what? Uh, Texas, I believe, right? That's right. Houston, Texas. All right, Houston. Te uh, Houston. H-Town, man. Born and raised. Okay, nice, nice. There's a lot going on in Houston right now as far as uh, what's going on with the protests, George Floyd. Absolutely. I think it's going on across all of America, which is, which is nice to see. All right, so what, you, you have anything on that, on what's happening in Houston as far as the George Floyd or just in general, what's going on with George Floyd, uh, inequality, pol police brutality? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a sad situation. You know, I, I, um, I have a group of friends that I talk to almost every day uh, that I graduated with in college. Um, and we talk about, you know, uh, these injustices, you know, as an active victim of police brutality myself. Uh, I, I know what can happen. I know how fast a situation that's just a normal thing can escalate. And, uh, you know, it has to do a lot, in, in my mind, it has to do a lot with fear. You know, I, I don't think there's enough, unfortunately, there's not enough cultural understanding between uh, different, different, different groups, uh, whether that be, uh, you know, racial or socioeconomical. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of differences, a lot of issues and unfortunately, the supply and demand issue comes into place where you have good people that are just trying to do the right thing, that are intermingled with people that, um, that should never be on a police force, uh, you know, um, and, and those, those things are, are um, what do I want to say, those, those kind of issues are um, expanded upon when you, have, when you have this huge need, you know, for a police force, but you don't have enough people to fill that need. So what happens is, unfortunately, you fill the, the need with people that should not never be on a police force, should never, you know, I, I, I refer to it as kind of cowards. You know, you, you can't, uh, I have a friend who's a firefighter. I said, I said do you have people that are, um, that are firefighters that are afraid of fire? And he told me, you know, straight up, yes, we do, because there's such a demand for firefighters that unfortunately we had to hire people that normally wouldn't be hired. And I think, I think that's what happens. I think you have, you have policemen that should have never, should never have a gun or should never be, you know, policemen that are policemen because, you know, the job's available and that's the job they took. And, uh, and for, and, and fortunately those ones that don't really want to have a thing to really protect and serve now they're, you know, they're there, they're in a situation, they get scared, they don't know what to do, and, and this is what happens. Um, you know, I, I, uh, you know I, I, I don't know exactly how you fix it, uh, but, I, but I, I do think that you're just going to have to have, um, instead of worrying about, you know, quantity, I think we have to worry about the quality of the people that we bring in, and, and perhaps there's going to have to be some community ownership on both sides, meaning that, you know, the community... Uh, working better with the police because we have a horrible uh, relationship with the police, which is which is which is justified. But on the other end, the policemen, you know, maybe there's a community board or something that goes out that says, "Hey, look, we've had this problem with this many officers," and and them kind of releasing their records, right? Everything is secret. Everything we don't find out about issues on police officers until it's too late. You know, this is the issue with the police officer. He had what 17 violations. 18, you know, yeah. You know, and, and that's, 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 that's outrageous. You know, anybody would have been fired on their job, you know. And so the fact that the community doesn't know this, they don't know who they're talking to. They don't know who they're getting it into. And so, you know, perhaps there needs to be more accountability with the police, with the community to say, hey, look, you know, we've got these particular officers. They got this and now and the other. The hard part about that is how do you retain policemen if you do that? And, that, and that's the that's the real conversation we got to start having because if the community and the police force are continue to be at odds, it's going to be all this fear. And fear is not good when, especially when people have guns. It's it's never going to work out right. So you you're saying that you had a, a situation with police brutality? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, on my on my on my travels, um, I was traveling back from uh, from Dallas, uh, oh, actually from Iowa, from my son uh, who. Uh, 
was playing football uh, for a college and then we were driving back home and in Dallas, um, I had a, I had an argument with a guy at the fuel pump and somebody decided to call the police over it and a very simple, you know, misunderstanding between a person who really couldn't speak English guy ended up cutting me off. Didn't realize it. Um, I didn't know he couldn't speak English. So every time I was talking to him, he would kind of, he would kind of look at me funny. And so, you know, we had, we had a kind of an altercation and, uh, you know, I'm thinking it's a simple altercation. I'm about to walk away and, and, and go about my business. Somebody called the police, police get involved. You know, I put both my hands up and say, Hey, you know, I'm good. I got, I got no issues. You know, they get to shouting and hollering. And before you know it, you know, I'm in the middle of about to get maced. My kids about to get maced. My family's about to get maced you know, over a simple situation, over nothing. And then in the end, you know, they handcuffed me, put me in the back of the car, all this kind of situation, you know, they tried forever to get me on the ground. Um, uh, what ended up happening is the guy, the guy admitted it, and, you know, and, you know, and it's not, you know. The police officer admitted it? Yeah, it was, a, it was, it's bigger than a white and black problem because this was a Mexican cop and a black cop. And in the end, they ended up letting me go and they admitted, hey, man, we're sorry. We were intimidated. And I'm like, what intimidated you, man? I had my hands up or whatever, you know, but they're like, well, you didn't really comply and all of this and that, you know. And I don't know. I'm not a policeman. I don't, I don't know what kind of training they get or whatever, you know, all the procedures, things you're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, you know, that kind of bothers me for someone that's supposed to be a trained professional policeman to say, hey, man, I'm intimidated by it. And I, in the other way, it should be the other way around, right? I should be in the video by the yeah. cops. Um, but this happens. This happens. So you're saying you have a son, and I know me growing up, I've had uh, many encounters uh, with police officers, and it's very funny with all that's going on. It's, um, I was always taught, you know, take notes, get their badge, be cooperative, um, you know, write it down, file a complaint. But when you go, when you're actually in these situations, um, you do everything. Like every encounter that I've ever had with a police officer who I believe, I'm like, yo, this can't be legal what you guys are doing right now. Right. You do everything. I know my parents, they taught me, like I said, you know, uh, you know, be cooperative, be respectful. Even if they're doing something wrong, take their badge number, take notes. But right now in the in the in the temper in in the climate that we're in that what and the same thing that i'm seeing happen with everyone else i i can almost consider myself lucky cuz I, I these people that we're seeing these black men they're cooperating for the most part doing everything their parents probably taught them but they're still getting killed so it's like what do you teach your son like what are you teaching your son is it the same old you know the the things that we were taught like what are you teaching your son what can we teach our son well that's a great question because uh you know unfortunately my son uh he's had uh some run-ins with the police that, that, that didn't go the best um uh not to, that, that he got maced or anything of that nature but he got detained in a car you know they they, they told him uh you know, he, he had all his plates were right. He had insurance on the car and they still said that the car looks still looked stolen. And so they put him in the back of the car and, 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 and tried to arrest him. Uh, you know, there's really, as a, as a young black male, unfortunately, we are on the hunt, man. We're the, we're the prey. And unfortunately, what I tell my sons is the honest truth. I tell them just that. I say, look, man, when you get into these types of situations, the best you can do is just try to cooperate. Uh, but, you know, there's no guarantees. And so my biggest thing is to tell them, you know, you know, stay out of, you know, just to try to stay out of certain areas at certain times of the day. You know, it's just it's just trying to live your life. Unfortunately, you have to kind of live it a little bit differently than other Americans uh, at this point, uh, especially being young and black. I, it just it. Um, you know, I, I think I think some people, you know, you hear that enough and you start to take it for granted. But it it is true. I mean, and I've seen it. I've experienced it. You know, my kids have experienced it. And uh, so there's really no way now. I mean, there's really no way. We're all a lot of us are being very compliant. 
and we're still getting the same results. So there's really right. no secret to not getting killed as an unarmed black man. I would say it's because, you know, it's, it's other interactions, right? It's just, unfortunately, we get tied in with everybody else. So, you know, Matt, perhaps that police officer had a horrible experience with, a, with, a, with another African-American that was doing something, whatever the case may be. Unfortunately, we don't get the benefit of the doubt that we're somebody different. And I, I just don't think that that happens. And so I think that every situation, you know, and, and I'm speaking in general, right? I'm, of course, there's exceptions to the rules. I'm not saying there's not good police officers out there. There are good police officers out there that do their job and they go home and, and it's a tough job. It's a very tough job. I mean, I went to the George Floyd uh, protests out here in Houston, you know. I saw, you know, my own two eyes, you know, a lot of people that didn't even look like me throwing bottles at policemen, you know, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, these are, these are probably bystanding good policemen. I mean, they deserve to get bottles thrown on them? Probably not, right? But, you know, there's just so much rage and so much anger in that case. And I think, unfortunately, those situations don't go away. You know, it's almost like, you know, you ever heard, you know, somebody having a short memory. I don't think these cops you know, that, that get in these situations have that short memory. And so every situation, with us, it's treated almost in the same way. Oh, this guy's going to get violent with me. You know, I've seen this before. You know, this look before, he's going to do something. And uh, it's that fear, man. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how you don't stop that without more community involvement and more, not really education, just 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 more conversation between the two groups. Because if you don't have it, and we don't have that, right? I mean, uh, how many people, how many black people, you know, that trust the police and, and want to go talk to the police or, or you, you get a call from the police and say, hey, you want to support us? You know, uh, you're hanging up, right? Like, you know? <laughs> so it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that if we don't somehow, and it's hard because there's, there's hurts on both ends, you know, because I mean, has police been, been killed before? Sure you know, uh, at a traffic stop or, or whatever they've been, sure, absolutely. Do they all look like us? No, I don't believe that at all. I think it's, it's it, you know, it's people. It's not a race, it's people. And, and, and until we can figure that out uh, on both sides, we're going we're gonna to continue to have a problem. You know, it's not policemen, it's, it's, it's that police person, you know, that, that made this mistake or that, that have this issue. Now, what compounds it is that you have police officers that just stand by and let it happen, like with the George Floyd thing. I mean, it was for the officers. They're just standing there. You know, that's, 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 that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. But It's but weird that time, he didn't even lighten up. That's my thing. He didn't even lighten up. Like, you know, if you're in a situation um, with someone, you want to get them into a position where they can't, you know, do what they need to do to, to, to switch the advantage. But he didn't move. He didn't lighten it up. He didn't change his position. He just stayed there. He didn't lighten up. If I'm pushing somebody up, trying to get control of them, hey, all right, cool. You can't breathe? All right, cool. Let me let me lighten it up. I'm going to still be on you, but let me just lighten it up a little bit. Right. There was no, no I, light. He didn't change at all. No. It was very weird. And, 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 that, and that's, well, I think that all comes down to his record, right? If, if if I've gotten 17, 18 different complaints and I've never been, you know, oh, yeah. you know, I'm still working. I feel like I have the license to do whatever the heck I want to do. You know, I think that he felt an entitlement, right? And that's part of it. You put a badge and you put a gun in somebody's hand, that's a lot of power. That's a lot of empowerment. And if somebody's not ready for that, you know, it, it can it can lead to their own destruction. And I think that that's what happens a lot of time. You have you have people that are in that that in that uh, have that authority that shouldn't have it and uh you know and unfortunately that's that's in a lot of it. you could look at you, know, you could look at the education so you could look at a lot of different places where that happens you know somebody's got a job and they don't really you know they're doing it for a paycheck yeah. and um and they and, and they they should <laughs> never ever have that responsibility and and unfortunately they do okay all right, so we, uh, I appreciate you, you opening up, um, sharing your thoughts on what's going on in the world. Um, so I, I, let's, just, let, let's move forward a little bit. We do have a, 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 a young black man. Uh, he's an author of a book, a visual book. I, I definitely want to get into that. Uh, before we do, I, uh, how can we connect with you? Uh, are you on social media? 
uh, how can we connect with you before we get started? Yeah, so the best way is uh, to go to www.jblion.com. And um, um, I have all my information there. Uh